Hello, and welcome to Avio's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. It is Tuesday, January 26th. Welcome to the channel. If you are new, please take a moment to subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, please feel free to also head over and join Avio'sJourney.com. Uh, v- I'm sorry, Avio's Journey Facebook. Love to have you there. Uh, today, I've got a really cool episode, actually. Uh, I don't know what was up with that opening. That was weird. <laughs> I was trying to do something different because I switched around the like and subscribe. I usually say, please hit the like button and subscribe. But I said, here's please subscribe, hit the like button. And then it was like, well, what's next? Uh, I need something else. And then I said, head over to the website instead of the face. You know, I don't know. Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Anyways, I have a question from Catherine who joined uh, Facebook, our Facebook group at a viewer's journey Facebook group. And her question was, how do I get comfortable doing VO? And I thought this would be a great topic to have a quick video about. Um, I've talked about in the past getting comfortable doing voiceover, uh, especially with my own journey, because uh, when I first started, it was very awkward. And that's why I kind of came up with this idea in my mind. I always called it the mile of crap between your mouth and the microphone, right? There's just something between it, like this big wall that whenever we start to record and we're, it's like, you know, we're not, no one's around, we're by ourselves. It just changes our mindset. And all of a sudden we start to record and we're like, this is me recording. I am recording a voiceover. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like we just start talking weird. The same thing with people getting on stage, right? They'd be like, uh, you know, they'd be like, all right, I'm about to go on stage. And they get on stage and be like, I'm on stage now. This is me talking on stage. And they get off and be like, hey, how'd I do? <laughs> you know, it's just like there's this change that we feel like we have to perform in front of people while we're doing voiceover. And it's very hard to break that mindset. Um, something that I did to really help was a lot of voiceovers. A lot of practicing, a lot of reading audiobooks, a lot of doing auditions, scripts. I mean, I just did over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, and and literally it took me about a year and a half to two years to really just become comfortable doing voiceover. But here's the thing that I realized, and this is important. I realized it wasn't just about me being comfortable, okay? It was about me actually creating the voices that I use. And see, this is, I think, at least just in my mind, this is a misconception because I don't mean create the voices that I use like for a character. I meant create the voices I use for my commercials and voices I use for e-learning, voices I use for explainer videos, voices I use for uh, intros and outros, voices I use for narration. These are all me and my voice. However, the presentation style of them differ from the way that I talk normally to people. So I had to become comfortable switching between these, beginning to get a familiarity with my presentation style. I had to create one, basically, because I had never done this before, right? We'd never done, if you've never done voice acting, well, you've never done it. So you actually have to create it. But here's the thing. You're creating a style not changing your voice, just the way you're presenting it. And when people come to you and they're like, uh, you know, like clients, like, hey, we want you to be conversational, you know, natural. What they're saying is, is they don't want you to be boring. And that's the, I think that's another misconception. They don't want you to be boring. They want you to be yourself, but with this caveat, they want you to be yourself, but with the emotion, the context in which they're giving you. See, so if you don't naturally, if you're not a person who wears their emotions on their sleeve, if you're not a person who is, you know, a big wee kind of person out there that's, you know, very emotional, 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 you're not, (laughs) you're, you're not one of those people, it's difficult to show sensitivity, we call it being um, showing sensitivity in theater, right? Being able to show different sensitivities, whether it's excitement, whether it's seriousness, whether it's um, uh, reflection, whether it's matter of fact, whether it's, you know, and then we can go into tones, right? Because we voice actors know tones. But the, the point to all this 
is that it takes time to build your presentation style. And you've got to work at it. You've got to practice it. And the only way to do that is by trying out a whole bunch of different things and keep going with it. Keep trying with you know, keep trying it. Just keep doing it. That's really the only way to get past it. Another thing too is I had to get comfortable just talking in front of a mic. I had to get comfortable reading a script out loud that was not my own words. That's another thing. Uh, I, you know, I have a college education. I have a master's degree in educational leadership. I've been a teacher. Uh, I, you know, I've done all sorts of things. And I only say this because you would think that I would be able to take a script and it would easily, I would easily be able to read it out loud, especially with all the acting I, I've done in my past. But here's the thing. When I started, it was hard. It was really hard for me to read out loud. I, I struggled with it. It was like, um, I, I don't know. It just, it just, I honestly felt for a long time that there was something like wrong with me in my reading and I didn't realize it all these all this time. But what happened was, is the truth is, is that reading someone else's writing that's not written for you and then making it sound like it's your own words, it's your own way of saying something, that in itself is a challenge and is a skill in which you have to practice at it. It doesn't happen overnight. I don't know where the, the idea came up that if you got a cool voice, you know, like if people say, oh, your voice is great, that you could just start picking up scripts and, and sounding great at, like sounding good at it, you know, because sounding good is different than acting well, all right, or relaying a message. Because when you get into this business long enough, what you start to realize is that the sound of your voice yeah, I can make a difference here or there whether you have a deep voice, you have a high pitched voice. But in the end, if you can act, the sound, the, 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 the way your voice sounds, for the most part, doesn't matter as much as your acting, as your delivery, as the way you express emotion and feeling, the way you express an idea. To get comfortable with that, you have to practice. It's not easy. So again, to do that, you need to continue to read, continue to work on talking in front of a script. I know this is going to sound crazy, but I recommend that you actually do. Um, I recommend that you I started a podcast and I started talking uh, you know, every couple of days doing a podcast. I got used to, and it's funny, if you listen to a VO's Journey podcast from when I first started, the first podcast was like, hello, welcome to a VO's Journey. This is Anthony. I'm here to help you. Like, it, was the weird, it was totally weird. And then as you go through the podcast, all of a sudden you're like, you hear, hello and welcome. Like you start hearing all, like you start hearing me change. Not my voice change, but the comfortable, like me being comfortable being myself and then realizing too that, you know what, people actually like me and they like the different presentations, okay? They like the different presentations that I am giving. And that's another thing as a voice actor, right? Getting your styles down is important. You have more than one style, right? You can have, you know, like I said, you can have a... a um an intimate, um, you know, style, a, a, a uh, direct, a uh, matter of fact, a guy, you know, that this guy or gal next door idea, you know, you can have authoritative, you can have conversational, you know, you can have nurturing or enticing, uh, inspiring. There's all these different styles. And, and then there's the unspoken rules, like how to, how people want or expect you to sound reading a documentary how people expect you to sound reading phone messages in IVR, how people expect you to sound doing a 15-second spot or a 30-second spot, how people expect you to sound doing uh, medical narration, how people expect you to sound doing podcast intros and outros. Now, there's always exception to the rule, but generally speaking, I found that a lot of it really is the same. There is a cadence, a delivery, uh, what makes us unique is what we bring to that. Just like, um, just, just even like Shakespeare, right? The whole idea with, with Shakespeare, what made Shakespeare special is all his stories aren't new. They weren't new. He didn't come up with them. He took old stories and put a new spin on it, right? He changed it 
and made it different, but it was the same story, okay, as had been written before him. So I'm just hoping that through this video, if you are new, you're trying to start out, or you're not new, you've been in this for a year or two, and you're, you're still feeling uncomfortable. Like, I was at a point where every time I did a voiceover, I constantly wondered, am I doing this right? Am I being fast enough? Am I being slow enough? Is my pitch variation? Am I making it sound interesting? And, you know, am I am I making it flow correctly? Does it does it, you know, do it do I think it sounds okay? Like it was constant. It was a constant uncomfortableness. It really was. Even when I read audiobooks, I always every single time I did an audiobook, I always and I did a lot. I've done a lot of audiobooks, hundreds of audiobooks. When you know, those first few, those first hundred or so were brutal. Because I just felt all the time like something was not right. And when I look back at it, I realize I wasn't comfortable just being me, delivering something, delivering a message to people. Okay, I just wasn't comfortable delivering a scripted message. That's important because I was always good at I feel like I could deliver a message improv okay, or rehearsed, but delivering a scripted message that wasn't written by me or written for me, that's a, that's a challenge. That's something new and something you're going to have to work on. So to recap, to be comfortable as a voice artist, you need to practice. You actually, you need to do this a lot. You need to get comfortable talking, get familiar, feel good talking in front of a microphone, understand where to where to position yourself with the microphone, all right, what you can and can't do with your microphone. Build your styles. You know, say, hey, I want to have, I want to promote three different styles. I have an authoritative style, I have a conversational style, and I have maybe, you know, a silly guy style. All right, or maybe an accent style. So, yeah, you know, we can, you can, we can debate about vocab words, but I'm just saying that, you know, Start yourself out trying to create your own styles, okay? And and remember, it's you delivering your voice, but based off of the emotion or style that you're being asked to do it in. And if you've never done those before, you have to actually design them and make them, okay? You've got to build that, your style, your different styles. There, again, there's this idea that we all have them already done. I didn't. So, all right, you guys. Thank you so much. What a great question, Catherine. I hope that helps. And thank you guys, as always, for watching. Again, like and subscribe. See, I got it better that time. Uh, also, if you're interested, uh, go out and check over a VO's journey. I posted a brand new course that just came out about how to set up your first studio uh, equipment and everything like that. It's pretty good. Uh, and it's a good price that, that you know, new, new people can, can definitely afford it because I know I didn't have a lot of money when I started. Started. Um, so, uh, and of course, if you know, there's a bunch of other things over there on aviosjourney.com for you to check out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Goodbye.